Hi, and welcome back to Reflect Forward. I'm your host, Carrie Siggins. Today is an advice from a CEO episode, and today I want to talk about values. So the other day, I was leading a workshop uh, at a local leadership summit here on self-leadership, and um, the the way that I kicked off the exercise was a values um, uh, assessment. So I had a huge list of values and I told everybody in the audience to go in and pick your top three values. And you can only pick three because of course it's easy to go through and, and check off, you know, dozens and dozens of like, yes, this is mine. Yes, this is mine. But it's really, really important to get clear on what your top values are and then what that top one is. And the reason I say that, because if everything is important, then nothing is important. And when you use values, when you live by your values, you're using them to decisions. You're using them to um, to assess trade-offs uh, going on in your life. And so I wanted to help everybody understand the power that values has in their own, have in their self-leadership journey. So... I was talking to one of the attendees afterwards, and he was telling me that he had never done a values exercise like that. He had never gone through and forced himself to pick his top one and that he felt really torn because what he felt his top one was, wasn't necessarily was in alignment with the way that he was raised, like what his belief system was. And he was really struggling with like, who am I, right? My belief system seems to be changing. Like, I don't believe the same way that, that my parents believe anymore. And so when I say my value is something that's very different than, you know, what theirs is that I feel guilty. And I really appreciated this conversation because you can't have values that are other people's, right? Not to live an authentic, fulfilling life. If you are living your life for other people, if you're living your life on other pe- based on other people's values, it's not going to be a meaningful and fulfilling life. And so we had a long discussion around how it's okay to pick your own values and that it's okay that they're different from your parents. And it might be different from the belief system that you were raised in. Like the most important thing is, is that you're figuring out how to navigate your life and live true to your values, because that's how you're going to show up as your very best self. If you're trying to become somebody who you're not, it's going to, going to crash and burn. I know firsthand how you crash and burn. And so I shared with him my story of evaluating my values um, because I did something that's very similar. And this is a very personal story, and maybe I might be judged by saying, uh, telling it, but I'm going to. So when I first did my va- values exercise, I had my top three values were um, were self care, authenticity, and drive. And I felt really guilty that family wasn't at the top one. I was like, how can I put self-care and my drive for success ahead of my family? And um, I felt really guilty about that. And so I changed it. I erased it and I changed authenticity, um, which is you know really funny, quite ironic. Put family, self-care, and then drive. Uh, as my top three, so I could explain it uh, to the to the group when it was my turn to share. And so I left that exercise feeling really crappy because that isn't my top value. My top value is absolutely self care, and here's why: if I can't take care of myself, I can't take care of anybody else. And therefore, I know I have to exercise. I know I have to manage my stress. I'm always, always, always going to take care of myself because then I can be healthy and show up as my very best for other people. And so as I thought through this exercise and how I was really torn and how I was judging myself and how I was afraid others were going to judge me, I decided that was it. I had to stop because... You know, my life went downhill uh, those 16 years ago when I truly was living my life for other people. When I was so worried about what other people thought of me, 
Um, I didn't know what my values were. I certainly wasn't living them. And, and the, the loneliness and isolation that I felt by trying to pretend to be somebody I wasn't took me down. And then here I was, like this happened, I don't know, probably, I don't know, 10 years ago, this, this, uh, values exercise here. I was again, trying to, to say that something was a top value when it really wasn't. And I know that this sounds really harsh because of course I love my family and I love my son and I, my goal is to be the best possible mother. And I think that I'm doing a pretty good job (laughs) raising my son, but I knew that it wasn't authentic. So I said, it's going to stop. And my values are, my top values are now self-care, authenticity, family, and drive. And drive has really come now later on because I'm more mature in my career and I'm more at ease with where I am um, in in my career and in the success that I've created. And I really do love being a mom. But I know that if I'm not taking care of myself and then if I'm not being authentically me, then I'm not going to be a good mom. I'm going to be resentful. I'm going to feel bad about myself. I'm going to not be healthy. I'm not going to be in shape. And that is not a way to show up for my son. And I want my son to live his values to that are true to him. And his mom might not be the top value, right? Right now it's pretty much basketball. Uh, but I have to show up that way and you have to, too. And so it's so important to do this values exercise to really force yourself to pick your top three and then your top one and make sure that they are true to you and then use them in your decision-making process, right? So self-care is mine. I take care of myself. I get a weekly massage. I work out every day. I get eight hours of sleep. I eat healthy. I take a mental health day if I need to. I take vacations and I unplug. Um, I do acupuncture, I do energy work, I do a lot of self-reflection and exploring and meditation so I really understand myself and can be at peace with myself. And that's why I'm living my best life. It's because I feel good. I believe authenticity is the is the the foundation for everything that I do. How do I show up as my most authentic self in my leadership and in my life, in my way I raise my son and how I show up in my marriage, right? I want to be me. I want to be the best version of me. So that way I can fit into the bigger picture and create something that's really amazing with my coworkers, with my community, with my family. And I can't do that if I'm not being authentic and being true um, about who I really am. And then family comes as my third, right? Because I have a 10 year old son and we're creating this really amazing life together, my husband and me, and I show up for them every single day with my whole self because I feel authentic and I feel good. So I wanted to share that with you so that you can go through that same exercise. I highly encourage you to go print off a list of values off the internet and force yourself to pick the top three and then pick the top one and make sure that it feels really true to you. Your values are your values and no one can judge you on them and you should not judge yourself on it. And then use those values to make the very best decisions in your life, to guide yourself through tough decisions, to make trade-offs, to show up as your best self, to make the biggest impact in the world, live your values. So I hope that that helps today. It was a really interesting exercise and um, a lot of people in the workshop hadn't done it before. And then after we did that, we built out our vision for ourselves based on our values and our strengths and, and how we wanted to make an impact in the world. And it feels so much better when you can create the vision for yourself that is based on your top values so that you can, you can really show up as, as your true self. So anyway, that is hopefully a helpful exercise for you to consider doing. All right. So question of the week comes from one of my new employees, a new manager that I have. And he asked me, Hey, KP, do you ever feel guilty delegating? Because I feel guilty delegating. And 
The answer is no, I don't. But it's because I delegate the right things. Um, I don't delegate my job. I have a role to play. It's developing people. It's setting the vision of the company. It's helping to make sure that the, that that we are staying on track with our strategic initiatives. It's being there for my employees. And so I make sure that I never delegate those things. And so that way, when I do delegate, I know I'm delegating the right tasks. And I know that I'm doing it in a way of not to offload something from me, but to help the other person, the person I'm delegating to grow, to take on new challenges, to gain new experiences and new, new skills. And then if that person says, I can't do it or is overwhelmed, then I'm happy to reprioritize. I'm happy to say, no problem right? This, this can, this can come down later off the list or don't worry about it. I'll find someone else or I can take care of it. I really do encourage my employees to push back if they have too big of a workload and they can't take something on. So no, I don't feel guilty about delegating. I believe that great leaders know how to delegate. Well, they delegate the right tasks. They ask in the right way. They follow up. They set clear guidelines and, um, and set expectations around the outcomes they'd like to see. And then they let their employees do it. Like, don't be attached to the how, how they get it done. Right. Just say, this is the outcome I'd like to see. I'll check in with you to make sure that you have what you need. And, uh, and then, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it when the project is finished or whatever it looks like. So that's definitely, um, how I take a, a look at it. Like I look at delegating as a way to show people that I trust them and that I believe in them and that they are a valuable part of the company. So that's my response to that. So hopefully that helps you today. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Reflect Forward. If you like this episode, please go on to iTunes and uh, write a review, rate it, um, subscribe here on YouTube. If you're listening on YouTube or on any of the other podcast platforms and share it with a friend. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. See you next week. Bye.